Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating and interpreting an ROC curve in SPSS. ROC stands for Receiver Operator Characteristic. And we use an ROC curve to evaluate the sensitivity and specificity of a diagnostic test. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS, you can see I have a depression score. And let's assume that this is reported as a T-score, which is a standard score with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. And then I have an outcome variable, and this is dichotomous. It can either be negative or positive. So let's assume that a negative result is a result where a participant did not have a major depressive episode within six months of being administered the instrument that generated the depression score. And a positive outcome is an outcome where the participant did have at least one major depressive episode within six months of being administered the instrument that generated the depression score. So the depression score is scale, but the outcome is dichotomous. Additionally, we believe that in this case, that a lower score, based on the way our inventory is structured, our instrument is structured, we believe a lower score is predictive of a negative outcome. And we believe a high score is predictive of a positive outcome. And we can see just by looking at some of the observations here that some of the lower scores uh, do tend to be associated with the negative outcome and the higher scores tend to be associated with the positive outcomes. But in order to know what this relationship looks like for sure, we're going to need to run the ROC curve. So let's start that by moving to Analyze and then ROC curve. And this is what the dialog looks like by default. So the test variable is going to be depression score. And the state variable is going to be the outcome. But we need to know the value of the state variable when it's positive. So if I cancel out of here and go back and click this A1, we can see that negative is coded to 1 and positive is coded to 0. We can also see that in the variable view uh, by going to values. So 0 is positive, 1 is negative. So a positive outcome is 0. So moving back to our C curve, we want to set the state variable, in this case outcome, to 0. Also here for the display, you can see by default ROC curve is checked off. We're also going to want the width diagonal reference line. That line is indicative of a sensitivity and specificity level, which would both be zero. So that would not be a very good instrument. A good instrument would have high sensitivity and high specificity. And an instrument that has no value would have zero sensitivity and zero specificity. And we also want to check off the standard error and confidence interval and the coordinate points of the ROC curve. Under options, we can see that this is what is set like by default. We want to include the cutoff value for positive classification. And this is a particularly important element, the test direction. I mentioned this earlier a larger test result, right, a higher score on the depression score variable. Larger test result indicates a more positive test. So we believe that the higher this depression score is, the higher the probability of a positive outcome. So we want to leave this checked off to larger test result indicates more positive test because that is the test direction uh, that we have assumed. That would be our prediction. And I'm going to leave the other settings 
by default as well. And now we're ready to generate the ROC curve. We'll click OK. And you can see, uh, first we're given a case processing summary here. Uh, we had 60 observations and the outcome positive, that occurred 26 times, negative 34 times. And uh, you can see here from the superscript A, the positive actual state is positive. And of course, we indicated that in the dialog by setting that value to zero, right? So I go back to that dialog value of state variable zero. Then we have the actual ROC curve. And you can see on the Y axis, we have sensitivity. And on the X axis, we have one minus specificity. And you can see the green line is that diagonal line, uh, again, that was referenced in the dialog to set up this test. So if the ROC curve followed the screen line, if the blue line was following the screen line, we would have no sensitivity and no specificity, and that would not be a good instrument. But you can see here that the blue line, the ROC curve, is fairly far up uh, toward the top left. And this indicates that we're going to have a fairly good instrument. But we can numerically determine that from the next table. But just looking at this graphically, uh, we can see that this is probably a good instrument because of the way the ROC curve is toward the top left of this graph. So moving down to the next table, we can see the area under the curve, uh, as you might expect, is quite high, 0.892, a standard error of 0.043. This is a statistically significant result, and we also have the 95% confidence interval, the lower bound at around 0.8, and the upper at around 0.98. So as you're evaluating this area under the curve value, again, in this case it's 0.892, the uh, cutoffs for this area value uh, would be if it was greater than 0.9, that would be an excellent test. That would be a test that has favorable sensitivity and specificity characteristics. Above 0.8 is considered a good test. So if we're looking at this particular value, 0.892, uh, that's almost at 0.9. So this is somewhere between uh, good and uh, an excellent result, although it would be technically categorized as good because it doesn't quite reach that uh, 0.9 level. At the greater than 0.7 level, that's considered fair and greater than 0.6 but less than 0.7 is considered poor and anything below that would really have no value as an instrument. So really what we're looking for here from a good instrument would be uh, anything above 0.8 and in some instances depending on what we need the instrument for and what other instruments there are that, that we could use instead uh, we could accept something greater than 0.7 and uh, not quite at 0.8. So then moving down to the last table, uh, coordinates of the curve. And you can see there's uh, a lot of data here. Uh, but if we take a look at this left column, this is positive if greater than or equal to, and then it has the value. So this is where we would start to work to determine a cutoff score. And cutoff scores are not necessarily easy to determine. There's no uh, perfect cutoff score because you're always balancing sensitivity with specificity. And depending on what type of application that you are using the diagnostic test for, you may be able to tolerate low sensitivity and high specificity or high sensitivity and low specificity. And those needs are going to inform what cutoff score you select 
for any particular instrument that you're evaluating. So let me interpret a couple of these cutoff scores to show you what this means. Uh, say for instance that we were looking at this cutoff score of 46.5 and you can see it has a sensitivity of 0.885 and a value, the 1 minus specificity value of 0.294. This would mean that if we used this cutoff what we could expect would be that 88.5% of the positive outcomes would be correctly classified. So using this cutoff of 46.5 we would expect that 88.5% of the positive outcomes would be correctly classified, correctly identified by the diagnostic test as positive. And then moving over here to the 1 minus specificity, we could expect that 29.4% of the negative outcomes would be incorrectly specified or identified as positive. And we refer to that event as a false positive. So if it correctly classified a positive outcome as positive, that's a true positive. And if it classified a negative, you know, where the outcome was negative, as a positive, that's a false positive. So if you selected the 46.5 value, you'd have to be willing to tolerate about 30% false positive rate, which again, depending on your application, may be acceptable or it may not be. If we're willing to trade some sensitivity uh, for a lower 1 minus specificity value, we can move down to this 52, this cutoff value of 52, and here we could see that we would expect that 69.2% of the positive outcomes would be correctly identified as positive, uh, but only 2.9% of the negative outcomes would be incorrectly classified as positive. So we'd have a 2.9% false positive rate, but only a 69.2% true positive rate. So again, it's imperative to take into account the consequences of a false positive and decide what false positive rate it can be tolerated. What what would be a false positive rate that would be too high to tolerate? And what sensitivity uh, do you need? And you may find for certain instruments that you are unable to strike the balance that you need. That for any uh, given cutoff or potential cutoff score, you can't find a sensitivity and a one minus specificity value that is acceptable. It's important to note here too at this table uh, that if you move down, uh, you can see the superscript A here, move down, uh, the smallest cutoff value is the minimum observed test value minus one, and the largest cutoff value is the maximum observed test value plus one. The remaining cutoff values are averages of two consecutive order observed test values. But as you consider uh, potentially selecting a cutoff score, uh, keep that in mind. I hope you found this video on calculating and interpreting an ROC curve in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.